Hello guys, good morning, sorry, good evening. Am I audible? Yeah. Yes, guys. So today we are going to start the most easiest chapter of uh, your grade 11 physical chemistry, and that is chemical equilibrium, right? So equilibrium consists of two uh, uh, two topics here in grade 11, that is chemical and ionic. Ionic little bit on the tougher side. Chemical equilibrium is quite easy. So both chapter will do one by one. First we'll finish chemical equilibrium and then we'll start with ionic equilibrium. Ionic equilibrium is the last chapter of your physical chemistry. Okay. And then we'll move into organic. So, uh, I think we have a two. Two class will take not more than two. In two class will finish it. Do you have any exam? Not yet. Okay. Any information, any info, if you get uh, regarding exam, just let us know, any one of us, or you put it in the group better. So that we can plan things accordingly. Nothing, Amra, we haven't done anything yet. We are about to start. I said just we are going to start chemical equilibrium. That is it. So, Shurukare Kahani. Yes, tell me. Did you understand what I said? How many of you understood? Wait, mother. Achha, okay. Right. So, okay, mother, this is a different chapter. Okay, thermodynamics is done. It's a different chapter. Yeah, I said that only. Yes, Pranav, correct. <laughs> okay. Right. You see, like I said, this chapter is the most easiest chapter. Okay. Heading all of you write down, first of all. Chemical equilibrium. So this chapter is all about equilibrium in chemical reaction, right? Like we'll talk about equilibrium in chemical reaction. So how equilibrium exists in chemical reaction? What are the term associated with, uh, you know, uh, with equilibrium? Or we also see the effect of various factors on, on the equilibrium condition. Like what will be the effect of temperature? What will be the effect of pressure? What will be the effect of volume? Many other factors we have. Right. So first of all, this chapter, like I said, is all about equilibrium. So first of all, you need to understand what is equilibrium, correct? So what do you know about equilibrium top itself? What is an equilibrium? An object is said to be in equilibrium when an object is said to be in equilibrium. What is the condition for equilibrium state?
अच्छा got it okay there is no net change in the system right change is occurring but we cannot observe the net change net change is zero okay like you see thermodynamics we are finished right two object at same temperature if you have two object at same temperature right then there is no flow of current sorry heat temperature t temperature t there is no flow of heat no flow of heat and we say the two object is at what equilibrium thermal equilibrium right if the temperature difference is there the heat flows from high temperature to low temperature till the temperature becomes equal correct so this is thermal equilibrium we have so you see for equilibrium condition we must have two opposing factors isn't it suppose another example if i take if you have an object placed at a table for example if you have an object placed at a table if you apply a force from this direction an equal amount of force if you apply from this direction then what happens there is no net uh, you know movement in the block right it will be static there is no net movement and we say and we say the system or the block is at equilibrium net force is zero f net that is net force is zero right so you see for equilibrium condition if you remove this force then you are pushing the block from this side and the block will move towards the right if if you know we are assuming the condition that the force is you know good enough to overcome the frictional force that we have over here can we say that if you remove the right wala force this force if you remove then the block will move towards the right since we are applying the force from this direction right if this force is uh, can overcome the the frictional force isn't it right so this is what you see the two factor if you see over here the two example equilibrium requires two opposing factor without opposing factor equilibrium is not possible right so i hope you understand the uh, anyways you know what is equilibrium but we need to concern, understand all these terms with respect to a chemical reaction okay before going into the chemical reaction i let me tell you there are two types of equilibrium also two types of equilibrium one is static equilibrium one is static equilibrium you won't get any question in this classification but you should know the term actually right static equilibrium and the second one is dynamic equilibrium static and dynamic equilibrium static equilibrium the example we have here block on the table this is there is no net motion here there is no motion in fact the block is static at one position there is no net there is no motion at all this equilibrium is a static equilibrium no motion or no movement you are sitting on the chair right i hope not at the bed lying on the bed and attending the class yes so if you are sitting on the chair static at one position there is no net force you are at static equilibrium correct no movement f net net force is zero that is the condition of static equilibrium dynamic equilibrium is what i'll just do this one example you will understand what is dynamic equilibrium suppose we have a a container a bucket whatever you can assume suppose this is the bucket we have and in this the water is present in this 
this is the water level we have. This is the water level we have. Now, if you try to increase the water level, right? So we'll put some water. This is the inlet. Water inlet. You are filling water into this. This is the inlet. But what you see, you are filling up water into this tank, but the water level is not rising here. Why it not? It, it it doesn't rise. On inspection, what you find, you find that there is a hole here in the bottom, and the water is flowing out at the same time. Right? You are you are you no know, filling the water here. This is the inlet point, and this is the outlet point, right? From which the water is going out. So the water level does not rise. Only one condition we have here for this, that is the rate of inlet is equals to what? Is equals to the rate of outlet. Can we say that? The rate at which the water is filling into the tank with the same rate if it is going out, then there is no rise in the water level. Yes or no? Can we say that? Yes. So what happens here? There is a continuous flow. Still, the water level is static. Continuous flow. So the molecules position is continuously changing. Suppose one molecule is here. It won't be here for so long, right? It will change its position slowly, and it is possible that it will come out from this outlet. Yes or no? So the molecules position is changing at every moment. but still the water level is static constant it is not changing this kind of equilibrium we call it as dynamic equilibrium understood any doubt in this dynamic equilibrium any doubt no okay so with respect to equilibrium with respect to equilibrium yeah i'll go back one second yeah you have to note it down whatever i write on the board plus whatever i say everything you should write down okay if something is not required i will let you know that don't write this it's not required mata copy this down you won't be able to keep this in the mind you'll forget that yeah mother finished it's in jan sashwat exact date not sure right now but it's jan how many of you are attending bio session for kbi
संडे वाला अच्छा हाउ द क्लासेस आर गोइंग ऑन और एक्स फीडबैक टू मी हाउ द क्लासेस यू आर फाइंडिंग इन इट्स गुड आर यू अंडरस्टैंडिंग द कॉन्सेप्ट See there are two things. Um, okay, fast. So see the thing is, uh, you know, you need to complete the portions also on time. No, that's why he is going a bit fast. But you can ask him to slow down a bit. That's not a problem. If you are not able to write down the notes, if you are finding it difficult, you ask him, sir. You can wait. Like you stop me here. No, similarly so you can ask him also. That's not a problem. Another thing, you can push him to any level, as far as the concept is concerned. Let me tell you this. okay he is one of my good friend okay i know him personally i won't take his name because he is um, associated somewhere else not in bangalore okay we were uh, we both were there in uh, kota together we were working together in kota at kaire point right so he's a good friend of mine very good uh, knowledge very you know you can say knowledge wise he is very fine he himself is a doctor finished his uh, bds from a government college in delhi right so concept wise is very rich uh you can push him to any level if you if you do not understand the concept you can push him to any level okay so don't get shy must interact in the class all of you okay so a little bit fast i can understand because the syllabus is too much you know kpi syllabus is not defined so yeah, there are so many things we need to cover that's why he is probably going a bit fast but yes notes are very important you must write it down if you are not able to then ask him to just wait for for a while we'll write down the notes okay yeah so uh, yes so dynamic in dynamic equilibrium you understood here that the molecules position is changing continuously right and there is a continuous flow still the uh, level of water is static here that is dynamic equilibrium okay now you see if you observe the two things here for equilibrium condition one thing is for sure that there are two opposing factors like you see here inlet and outlet together right if force from the left then from the right also it is there so for any equilibrium we must have two opposing factors okay now if you talk about chemical equilibrium means equilibrium in chemical reaction equilibrium in chemical reaction if you talk about the equilibrium condition in chemical reaction this chemical reaction must be what must be reversible in nature must be reversible in nature why i'll tell you reversible in nature because reversible reaction what is the you know definition of reversible reaction suppose i have write down Your A gives B. This is the sign of reversible reaction. Two half-headed arrow towards the product and then towards the reactant like this. Okay, this is the sign of what reversible reaction? Because you see, reversible reaction is the reaction which proceeds in both direction, A to B and B to A also. It's possible. So two opposing factor we have, right? That's why the equilibrium possible only in reversible reaction. right so both way the reaction proceeds reactant to product and product to reactant both way the reaction proceeds and hence you know in this type of reaction equilibrium exist if there is only one way reaction a to b then equilibrium is not possible in those kind of reactions so one is like bidirectional reaction which is this and one is mono direction reaction which is irreversible reaction so if you talk about the classification of reaction one of the classification is this that the classification based on the direction of the reaction see this classification based on the direction of reaction 
right two types of reaction we have here reversible and the second one is irreversible reaction irreversible reaction like i said reversible reactions are those reactions in which the reaction proceeds in both directions so it is bidirectional in nature and this one is monodirectional represented by a arrow from reactant to product like for example a gives b this is irreversible reaction this reversible reaction is represented by this half headed arrow in opposite direction like you see here a gives b this one this is reversible reaction so equilibrium exists only in a reversible reaction here since it is more direction so no equilibrium okay we are talking about chemical equilibrium hence in this chapter we are mainly going to deal with reversible reaction understood there are different different classification here okay like based on direction we have these two type of reaction based on speed we have three type of reaction very fast slow moderate speed reaction one second one second we go a uh, reversible reaction uh, you know there's no condition aditya thing is you should know that this particular reaction is reversible once you practice you will understand like haber's process um uh, uh haber's process n2 plus 3h2 gives 2nh3 that is a reversible reaction so you should know few examples of reversible reaction okay we'll discuss uh, some examples here why reversible or irreversible that is completely on reaction condition okay we don't have any control on that if suppose a gives b and b also has tendency to revert back into a then it is a reversible reaction so this tendency depends upon the nature of the molecules there plus the condition of the reaction okay yeah so that's one thing so like i said a uh, classification of reaction we have many different types of classification direction wise we have this speed wise we have very fast very slow and moderate speed reaction uh phase wise we have homogeneous and heterogeneous reaction homogeneous reactions are those in which you know all phases are same only one phase present heterogeneous more than one phase okay like this we have various different classification of reactions okay but here we have done only direction based because we have to understand the reversible reaction over here. no we cannot make irreversible into reversible reaction uh generally it is uh, you know not possible or very difficult to do because because if it is possible then there is no point of talking about this right we change the condition and product will convert into a reactant right so reversible reaction we have one set of reaction irreversible we have another set irreversible reaction under any circumstances you cannot convert back into uh, you not go, go back into the reaction right if it is there maybe some very you know um, drastic condition if it is required maybe at that high temperature and high pressure or low pressure low temperature uh, we can talk about hypothetically but it is possible at very high temperature that particular molecule does not exist it may get vaporize or freeze or anything is possible right that's why we have the yes water to vapor is a reversible reaction it's a reversible process basically where water obviously you see water goes into vapor form when you have uh, you know hot water in the glass put your hand and cover it up properly the vapor condenses at your hand right it converts into liquid again so it is reversible reaction reversible process you can say understood yeah so why reversible why equilibrium condition or equilibrium exists only in reversible reaction because for equilibrium what we need what we need for equilibrium two opposing what 
factors correct two opposing factors so here you see a is going into b but b is also going into a so these are the opposing factors we have here we don't have such factor right that's why the equilibrium possible only in reversible reaction second thing you must understand for which is understood basically but i'll tell you since we are doing this first time so you should know this fact equilibrium possible whenever when the reaction is taking place in a closed container the container must be closed if it is not closed then it is possible that some of the species escapes into the atmosphere and in that case we will never have equilibrium condition mass must be constant total mass yes no closed container for equilibrium so it is you know generally it is not mentioned in any question but you have to consider this one closed container if equilibrium we are talking about yes fine no doubt okay now you see yes uh next one suppose we have this reaction we'll take the reference of this only to understand the concept here a gives b when a is converting into b right this we call it as forward reaction forward reaction when b is converting into a backward this is backward reaction okay no it's not possible for equilibrium we always have closed container any reaction because for equilibrium mass must be constant mass must be constant it is something like suppose you have a system if i try to explain this thing in terms of thermodynamics you have a system correct isolated energy is not going out under any condition rigid wall right then if a converts into b a reaction we have into this there is no exchange of energy with surroundings so can we say the total energy of a equals total energy of b at any time can we say that energy balance we can do because the wall is rigid no work is done on the system or by the system wall is insulated also so energy will not go into the atmosphere right it will be within the system only so if a is converting into b so at any point of time we can write the energy of a equals to the energy of b why because the total energy is constant there is no exchange possible here total energy is constant and hence this conservation we have similarly if the reaction is taking place so for equilibrium the total mass or amount must be constant if it is escaping into the atmosphere by any means then total mass won't be constant you cannot have the equilibrium condition understood this is the also the necessary condition we have necessary condition is this okay what solids means what solids means what and then also it's fine for anything a reaction must be in a closed container phase does not matter if you say h2o liquid converts into h2o gas or vapor the phase is changing over there right that's an equilibrium reaction right and don't get don't get confused that water is boiling it goes into the atmosphere how it is equilibrium what i am telling you that reversible reaction the process is reversible there when you have the reversible process in a closed container then equilibrium condition we can achieve but reversible reaction in open container equilibrium is not possible that's what i am telling you okay so we are talking about here two reaction forward and backward 
Okay. So what happens here? You see. Again, I'll write down this. At initially, we have only reactant present, right? So initially, only reactant present. If the reaction starts, then reactant starts converting into product. Suppose we have a container, closed container, in which I have taken A, the reactant, and some concentration of A we have here. Obviously, we have some condition also, the reaction condition. Under this condition, we have taken a certain concentration of A. When the reaction starts, after some time, what we see? After some time, what we see? That the concentration of A is decreasing and we are getting some product. Yes or no? B. So since A is converting into B, so what we can say? The concentration of A decreases with time and concentration of B increases with time. Yes or no? Because initially, there's no B, it was zero. Let do. But when the time proceeds, reaction proceeds, concentration of B is increasing because some amount of A is converting into B. It is closed vessel, so nothing is going out into the atmosphere. Within the vessel only, one part of A converts into B. Yes? So we can say as the reaction proceeds, As reaction proceeds, the concentration of the concentration of reactant decreases and that of product increases. Isn't it agreed? Agreed? Yeah, okay, fine. So, uh, yeah, so you see, we are going to understand one more term over here. That is the rate, rate of reaction. Why we are discussing this in a, in a while, you'll understand this. Any reactant, I'm just taking this a is a reactant, B is a product. Any reactant, any product. Here, this is A. Left-hand side, we always have reactant. Hurry, and that's the assumption we have always. Reactant and product. Okay. Now, tell me, what do you understand by the term rate? What is rate? Per unit time, right? So rate is what? Rate is change in any quantity quantity per unit time, correct? Like for example, velocity is what? Rate of change of rate of change of Displacement, right? So displacement divided by time is velocity, isn't it? So when I say rate of change of displacement, it means our calculation is displacement divided by time is velocity. Speed is what? Rate of change of distance means distance per unit time is speed. What is acceleration? What is acceleration? Rate of change of rate of change of velocity, right? So velocity by time basically it is, right? That is acceleration. So when you see here, whenever I say rate, it means we are doing per unit time calculation. If you are talking about rate of reaction, then it would be for rate of reaction, it is the rate of change of concentration. It is either the rate of change of concentration rate of change of concentration or pressure pressure we use when we have gaseous uh, you know reaction in case of gaseous reaction we use pressure otherwise concentration will talk about 
no doubt in this when you talk about the rate of any reaction so here that quantity is concentration or pressure okay now we talk about this forward and backward reaction so next write down rate of let's like this heading you write down forward reaction so forward reaction is reactant is converting into product once again mother once again reactant is converting into product and when the reactant is converting into product can we say the rate of rate of forward reaction forward reaction decreases decreases with time is it correct can we say that rate of forward reaction decreases with time because concentration is decreasing right so rate for any reaction you see rate is directly proportional to or not directly you write down write down proportional to concentration we have few things that we won't discuss now proportional to concentration we can have any terms over here but more or less this is not the only thing we can have concentration is square also we can have root over a concentration anything is possible but yes this you can understand just for now okay so in this bracket i'll write down here one star mark this is star mark of concentration not always means we do not have linear relation always we can have other relation also possible but with concentration rate either increase or decrease okay no no that's not the reason why well, let 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 it be okay i won't discuss all these things here we have one more chapter of chemical reaction that is chemical kinetics okay there we will exactly understand the relation of rate and concentration okay we have one term over there order that you need to understand uh, let it be let's not go over there not required here in this chapter usually what happens since the reactant is converting into product right so concentration of reactant decreases hence the rate of forward reaction also decreases so could you tell me at what point the rate of forward reaction is maximum yes initial point the point where the reaction is about to start there the rate beginning of the reaction very good so there the rate of the forward reaction is maximum can we write down just opposite thing for backward reaction right so for backward reaction what happens backward reaction we can say the product is converting into reactant just opposite react okay so rate of forward reaction is what sorry rate of backward reaction is what increases with time because the product is forming 
product is forming right rate of forward reaction i am writing it down as rf rate of forward reaction rate of rate of backward reaction is rb why it will decrease initially we have only a there is no product present initially we have only reacted see you have aditya there is a law for this okay we'll discuss that but one simple logic you just think if you have a very high concentration of reactant correct then it it will have high tendency to convert into product no yes initially when the concentration is too high then the conversion rate will also be high it will convert fast right reaction will be more more molecules more will be collision more will be the rate and hence the conversion is more Hello, am I audible? Ah, uh, yes, sir, you are audible. Oh, what happened? Don't understand. Where is this? Hmm, something is happening. Just a second, guys. Ah, okay. Ah, fine. Yeah, it's fine now. Okay, so more amount of reactant conversion rate will be more. Hence, it is directly proportional, right? I'm telling you, it is not always directly proportional, but it is not always directly proportional. You can have, you can have this thing also that the rate is directly proportional to concentration square. Rate is directly proportional to root over of concentration rate is directly proportional to concentration itself anything is possible here but let's not go or discuss all these things it is there in chemical kinetics that we'll discuss later you can just here understand rate increases with increase in concentration decreases with decrease in concentration clear yes okay so we have this now see what happens as the reaction proceeds as the reaction proceeds we can say the rate of forward reaction decreases and the rate of backward reaction increases so we'll get a point here where the rate of forward equals to the rate of backward right obviously one is decreasing other one is increasing so we'll get a point where the rate of forward equals to the rate of backward it is something like this rate of forward reaction is maximum initially and rate of backward reaction is minimum right so slowly it is going down decreasing and it is increasing right at some point of time the rate becomes equal forward and backward this is the condition we have this condition is the condition of equilibrium any doubt what is the condition of equilibrium the condition is rate of forward reaction must equals to the rate of backward reaction correct okay rate of forward must equals to the rate of backward reaction so two points we have here
कंडीशन ऑफ इक्विलिब्रियम द फर्स्ट वन इज रेट ऑफ फॉरवर्ड इक्वल्स टू रेट ऑफ बैकवर्ड एंड दिस इज ओनली पॉसिबल वेन द रिएक्शन इज टेकिंग प्लेस इन इज इन क्लोज कंटेनर is the if the reaction is not in closed container this reaction this condition you never get and hence the reaction equilibrium is not possible right okay one more very important understanding of equilibrium you must have But just second, Hari Hari, I don't get how the rate of backward reaction is increasing. It will increase, no? You see, you think like this, Anurag. You think like this. We have A to B, correct? When time t is equals to zero, where the reaction is about to start, we have only A concentration of A is C A, and there is no B present. When B is not there, there is no tendency to convert into A. as the reaction is starts ca minus c some part of a converts into b this become c the moment is it starts forming its tendency to convert back into reactant a will increase will be more and hence we say as the time to proceeds the rate of backward reaction increases because the concentration of b is increasing means what it is simultaneously happening what is happening a is going into b and b is going into a so initially rate of backward reaction if you see it is lesser than to that of forward reaction but slowly rate of forward reaction is decreasing and rate of backward reaction is increasing that means rate of conversion of a into b is gradually decreasing rate of conversion of b into a gradually increasing so you'll get a point a time where the rate becomes equal is it clear okay yeah yes that's what hariya and i am going to discuss this point here one second so we are talking about equilibrium here correct so what happens when the equilibrium is established okay all of you listen to me very carefully here equilibrium is established then what happens rate of this reaction rf rate of this rf and rate of this reaction rb Okay, R B. This becomes equal, right? R F equals to R B. I am not saying that the reaction is not happening now, or the reaction stops at this condition. What I am saying, I am saying at equilibrium, the rate becomes equal. Means the reaction is reaction is going on. Reaction does not stop at equilibrium, but the rate of the forward and backward reaction is equal. Means the rate at which A is converting into B, and B is converting into A becomes equal. That is the equilibrium condition. I do not. I am not saying that the reaction is not happening once the equilibrium is achieved. Reaction is continuously going on even at equilibrium also. But the only difference is once the equilibrium achieved, if you do not disturb the reaction, then the reaction proceeds with equal rate. rate of forward and rate of backward is it clear clear okay so these are the few properties you must uh, keep in mind with respect to equilibrium of equilibrium write down the reaction never stops at equilibrium at equilibrium but it proceeds with equal rate 
in both direction this is the first property we have don't get confused they'll ask you questions on this theoretical question also they fail uh not always anurag once again i'm coming to that point also once again okay that's the one point when the reaction proceeds with equal rate then what we can say we can say there is no net change in the concentration of reactant or product no net change in the concentration of of reactant or product is it fine did you understand this point there is no net change suppose some part of a converts into b at equilibrium the same part of b will also convert into a so concentration will be constant of a and b is it clear okay so the third point also you can write the concentration of reactant and product is constant reactant and product is constant again you see acha i'll go back one second okay with respect to this reaction we are talking about so what i said here concentration of reactant and product is constant i am saying constant not equal okay so all three possibilities we have as far as the concentration is concerned we can have ca the concentration of a equals acha i'll write on this page just a second at equilibrium we have all the possibility what possibility that concentration of a can be equal to the concentration of b concentration of a could be more than the concentration of b concentration of a could be less than the concentration of b all three conditions are possible right constant means does not mean it is equal rate is constant right rate becomes equal not concentration suppose in 2 seconds if i take this example in 2 seconds the concentration is changing from 8 to 4 so what is the rate here what is the rate here it is the difference of this 4 divided by 2 it is 2 molar per second can we say the rate yes so we can have this value 2 for any concentration like you see we can also say that if it is changing from 12 to 8 12 to 8 if it is changing in 2 seconds then also the rate is what the rate is 2 molar per second only means at two different concentration for a given time we can have the same rate right it it means that we do not have a specific condition for concentration we can have any three condition possible is it clear did you understand this yes so in chemical reaction what kind of equilibrium is it what kind of equilibrium is this in a chemical reaction dynamic or static what kind of equilibrium is this dynamic or static it is dynamic equilibrium because the reaction never stops okay it is a dynamic equilibrium each and every point is clear is there any doubt
clear everyone everyone respond please it's clear acha okay now you see all these information that we had discussed uh, just now based on this how they frame the question in je okay we will see that i am going to draw few graphs here uh, you have to tell me that which graph is possible for any equilibrium condition right this is rate this is time this is rate this is time okay look at this graph first of all you tell me which graph represents the forward reaction which graphs represent the backward reaction 1 and 2 which one is forward which one is backward one is forward and two is backward right because you know forward rate decreases so one represents forward and two represents backward okay so one thing is correct now this is the rf rate of forward reaction and this is rb the rate of backward reaction this is also rf this is also rb and this is also rf this is also rb tell me which of these three graphs represents the equilibrium state or equilibrium graph represents the equilibrium state first second or third first graph first and third so the condition for equilibrium is what the condition for equilibrium is rate of forward reaction equals to the rate of backward reaction this is the condition we have so this is true this is true if this condition is at here so this graph represents the equilibrium state but in the other two graph you see the rate is not equal correct rate is not equal it is becoming constant after some time the rate is becoming constant after some time but it is not equal hence these two graph does not represent the equilibrium state first and second
represent equilibrium. But the reaction does not stop at this point. No, it continues, right? Here you see when it becomes equal, then it will go with the equal rate like this. So it is the equilibrium. Institute. If it is equilibrium, the reaction should stop over here. Correct. So this is not the first two graph does not represent the equilibrium state. Correct. One more th one more thing you must keep in mind. Technically, this graph is not possible because at any instant the rate cannot exceed this particular line, this particular value, right? Because it is a maximum rate of any reaction we have, isn't it? This is the maximum rate, the initial concentration of reactant. So this graph will never exceed this line. Okay, so let's let me correct this. I have purposely I have given this. So this graph you must take care of. It won't, it will never exceed this particular line, which is the maximum rate. Clear? No doubt. Okay, so only this one is correct. Okay, now three more graphs we have here. Tell me, which graph represents the equilibrium state? Okay, see, so obviously if you have the graph like this, okay, you see for this one, yes, for this one, you see the concentration is equal, right? Concentration is equal. So for this one, we can say it is CA is equals to CB, reference is that reaction only we are taking. And that is the condition of equilibrium. So this one is fine, equilibrium state. Here what we have, 
C A is greater than C B. This one is also fine. Equilibrium is we know this condition is also possible. This reaction is also this graph is also fine. For this one, purposely I have given this graph which is above this concentration line. So if this is the graph we have, then this is not possible because the concentration of product can never exceed the concentration of the reactant given. Okay, if the initial concentration is zero, right? So purposely I have given this. So if I make one change over here, suppose if the graph goes like this, okay, it becomes constant at some point. So for this one, we can say what? For this one, it is CB greater than CA. So this graph is also possible. So for this one, if concentration is the excess, then all three, all three graphs represents equilibrium state. We are talking about concentration, Madhav. It's not mole. Mole is not concentration. Mole per liter we are talking about. It's not possible. No, that is not possible. No, Hari Haran. Reactant won't convert into product completely. Because before that only you will have the equilibrium state and then the rate will be equal. I have taken this example shares, you see. Suppose you have the constant change in constant A to B, suppose we have here. You are starting with, suppose 20 is the concentration, molar concentration you started with. It is zero initially. Then at it is T is equals to, let me just write this down properly. It is T is equals to zero. This is the state we have. What we observe at time T is equals to two second, the concentration of A becomes 15 and rest is B, that is five. So what is the rate of the reaction? Tell me with respect to A, the rate is what? It is five by two. So I'll take one value so that we can cancel it out and we'll have a better, you know, this thing. I'm assuming this as uh, 20 to 16 molar, I'm assuming, and this one becomes the rest, which is four. Some hypothetical data I'm taking, correct? So what is the rate here with respect to A? The rate is, is it two? Can we say? So yes, tell me. Yes, Acha. The reaction continues, right? So at T is equals to four second, this becomes 12 molar. So what is this? This would be eight, isn't it? So for this concentration, obviously the concentration is different. It was 20 and 60. Now from 16, it becomes 12, right? So what is the rate for this data? For this data, what is the rate? Shreyas, tell me. It is two, again, for the next two seconds. Yes, so rate is equal or not? at two different concentration. So rate is what? It is change divided by time. Change in concentration divided by time. The rate is two, you can get from any possible, you know, concentration, like 100 to 50 in 25 seconds. Rate is two, right? If you have 10 to, like suppose we have, we have eight to four in two seconds, the rate is two. So for any value of concentration, we can have the same rate. That's why we have all three possibilities. I hope you understood with this. Right, so concentration could be anything because we need to find out the rate that is difference in concentration divided by time. Chalo, I think you understood all of you, clear?
yes you can say that if slope is equal the rate is equal because slope is dc by dt only right so dc by dt is nothing but concentration per unit time that is rate you can say that any doubt so based on the graph they ask this question okay so like students get confused over here which one this graph you are talking about namta the first one see it is a it is a condition when the concentration of b is more than to that of a that is also possible na no? see here A gets to be. We have this reaction. Initially, it is ten. At time t is equals to zero. At time t is equals to three. Suppose it becomes nine. Oh, sorry. Suppose it becomes a uh, one. Tell me the rate with respect to A. Number two. What is the rate? No, no, no. Wait, wait. See, ten to one change in concentration is what? Ten minus one. Ten minus one change in concentration divided by the time required to produce this change, which is three. Ah, fine. Three you got. Yes, it's correct. No. Yes. So, what is the concentration of A at time three? At time t is equals to three. What is the concentration of A at t is equals to three? What is the concentration of A at t is equals to three? No, it's not nine. So it's had been reacted. Nine reacts. One is left. No, this is what which is left. So what is the concentration of A at time t is equals to three? That is one. So how many reacts? How many reacts? Nine. So one mole of A gives two mole of B. Since nine mole reacts. So nine mole of A gives how much mole of B? Bolo, tell. Speak up. One mole gives two. Since nine mole reacts, so nine mole gives how much? Eighteen. So this is the molarity of B you will get. You see, the concentration of A is one, and that of B is eighteen. It is more, no? so it depends upon the stoichiometric coefficient so in general we need to understand that all three conditions are possible uh, if it one is to one ratio if you if you take then also it's fine nine mole reacts one gives one so nine gives nine understood namta correct that's why i said that all three conditions are possible at equilibrium you can ask one more thing here like so it was zero initially it becomes 18 so rate should be 18 minus 0 by 36 right yes or no concentrate here it's very important is this a a you know a, a genuine question because at equilibrium the rate must be equal i am i am taking this rate of forward is 3 but this rate what we are getting time is 3 seconds only for both the reaction so 18 minus 0 by 3 is 6 we are getting so you must say it is not the equilibrium state yes Okay, are you alive, all of you? Tell me the don't. 
is, is this a genuine question? Could you answer this question? Why, what, what is happening over here? I said what Aditya, that for three seconds, whatever the change is happening is for three seconds. Means for B also the time is three seconds. For A also the time is three seconds. If it is the equilibrium state, then rate of A must be equals to B. Rate of disappearance of A must be equals rate of appearance of B. So rate of A is what? That is what we have calculated, three. No? 10 minus one divided by three. Similarly, if you find out the rate of B, it would be what? Difference is 18 divided by 3 is 6. Yes. So rate is not equal. It is not an equilibrium state. Can we say that? Yes. Could you explain this? Yes, yes, I got your point. Could you explain this? What is happening here? No, rate, rate is equal here. Okay, let's not confuse here. Yeah, just, just a second. See, to understand this, you need to know, you need to know the rate expression. For B, the rate expression would be half of the change in concentration divided by the time taken for this concentration. This two comes over here in the denominator. Hence, you see, it is three only we are getting. So how this rate expression will write that's not a question for this chapter. Let me tell you this thing. Okay. I said this because later on, I think you may have this doubt. Sir, here though, 8 by 3, it is 6. How the rate is equal? How did you explain this is an uh, equilibrium state? Because rate is 6 and 3, we are, uh, we, are, we are getting over here. Hence, to avoid this confusion, I have taken this question. But for this question, let me tell you, rate expression to write down the rate expression is not the question over here you are not going to have any questions based on the rate expression how to write down the rate expression with respect to reactant or product we have a separate chapter for this that is chemical kinetics that we'll do in grade 12 right so here let's not discuss about the rate expression okay it's not required over here but yes the expression is this per mole we are calculating over here. okay it's not that tough. You will understand once we, once we discuss this. But yes, the thing is like this. Okay, can we move on? Did you understand this? Can we move on? Yes, all of you. Namrata, any doubt? Okay, good then. So, uh, okay, so we had discussed this uh, rate. I hope you understood the concept of rate and any questions, graphical or theoretical questions based on rate and concentration relation, you could solve from this. Okay. Yeah. Give me a second. I'm just coming. <clears throat> 